All right, now we're really going to get detailed with the source monitor and to be able to really catch some real some some close fine editing tools. You you may or may not use these in your workflow depending upon where you are, but I guarantee if you continue on in this profession and uh start seeing yourself creating some movies, you, you'll you'll see these fine-tuned controls and you'll um, really, uh, at that point, uh, need to understand exactly what that means when we start kicking into the fine editing pieces. Let's open up a project, as we always do. Let's uh, let's make sure we are in 5.7. And we're almost done. Uh, th this next piece, though, we are going to get rid of some edits that have already been made, um, you know, towards the end of the movie. So here we go. We got our timeline. I want you to go down into the, now make sure, I know we had worked with the source panel in terms of pulling a clip in from the, the storyboard, and we're going to do that again, but for this particular case, I want you to go down to the timeline, and, and uh, if you need to zoom out, you can. There's a couple of clips, we're going to clean up some space first. Let's get rid of, uh, we're going to get rid of the last two video clips, because we're going to do those edits as we move along, and I'm going to expand out again so I can see this. I'm looking at the last one, which is Medieval Hero 1. Understand when I double click on a video clip, it opens up in the source panel. If I double click from here in the project panel, it's going to open up the original video clip. But I may want to make some edits on a video clip that's existing in the timeline already. And if you notice, go ahead and double click on Middle v Medieval Hero 1. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up that, that clip from the timeline into the source monitor and this is kind of important because since the clip is in the timeline this is the same clip we we edited last unit so it's already been edited once and the reason I double clicked it in the timeline is so I can pull up the edited piece as opposed to the full piece from the project kind of a little distinction there we are gonna edit this piece we are gonna scrub to let's see I'm just looking at my edit my EDL edit decision list here we are gonna scrub to the 25 21 marker, 25 seconds, 21 frames. Use my keyboard with the right arrow. And that's where we're going to set an out point. So I want a very small piece of this video clip. Keyboard shortcuts, I'm, I'm going to bring them up. I know some of you are like, oh, here we go with the keyboard shortcuts again. When you get good at this program, time is of the essence. Being able to edit very quickly becomes important. So you're going to hear me mention some of these keyboard shortcuts. I could just click on the out button if I want. Okay, but I'm going to click on the O, which stands for out. And you'll notice just quickly pushing the out, the O key on the keyboard sets an out point. You will get, believe it or not, you will get a lot better at keyboard shortcuts with more software that you end up using. With Premiere, since the out button is so close to it right here, um, you know, either one is fine. But if I wanted to put an in point, obviously some of you are, are with us, uh, you, you would click on the I button on the keyboard and you'd be good. All right, so I just made the clip if, 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 uh, or made the edit. If you look down in your timeline, you'll notice the clip got totally truncated exactly where I needed it to be. So I'm good there. I've got my out point there, and I'm, I'm fine there. We... All right, one more keyboard shortcut I do want to show you. It's the page up and page down. If I go down into the timeline and I click on the time indicator, you notice it's right in the middle of a, uh, of a video clip. If I hit the page up or the page down keys, page up will bring the time indicator back to the previous edit. Page down will bring it to the very end. Again, just a way to control the current time indicator in terms of where it is on the screen. So I keep hitting page up and it goes to each individual edit. I keep hitting uh, to the left and if I keep hitting page down, it goes into each individual end, end edit on the way out to the right. So let's make sure we're at the very end of the movie. We just clipped out this, this Hero 1 exactly where we need it to be. Now we're going to use that idea that I talked about before. We're going to go into the, the storyboard or the project, either one, and we're going to grab this medieval wide video. I'm going to double click on that. And uh, here, pretty much here's the way you're going to probably edit most movies. Let's take this piece. We're going to set an in point at 2621. These time indicators become important too. I can actually, instead of moving the time, the current time indicator and hitting the arrow keys, if I wanted to go directly into the box, I could just empty that out and type in 262021, 20, and I hit enter, and the time indicator goes exactly to 26 seconds, 21 frames, which is where I want to put my endpoint. 
So there's five different ways to get you to move your time indicator. Whatever works best for you is up to you. Uh, generally, I use the arrow keys, get it close, and then I use the arrow keys to, uh, to move the time indicator where I need it. All right, so we want an in point here. So I'm going to hit the I key, and that sets my in point. And I want only one second of this clip. So I'm going to move the time indicator to 2721. A couple of pushes on the key, and I'm going to hit the O for out point. So we have one whole second of this clip. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure you're on the video one track. Make sure that's highlighted. And the time indicator is at the end of the, the movie, which should be, if I look over in my program window, the duration here is 15 minutes, 20 seconds of video right here. So I'm exactly where I need to be. I've trimmed out my source clip for one second. And all I'm going to do, instead of dragging it down, I am just going to click on the overlay button and that automatically adds the clip down here. Now notice the overlay will add some audio in there too, so we're pulling the audio of this clip as well. That process of setting in and out points for the clip and then pushing them down is probably the best way you're gonna be able to edit. We're gonna do a couple more edits here while I've got it, a little more practice. We're gonna open up the uh, seventh clip name, which will be Medieval Hero 2. So I'm gonna go back to my, double click on that. Make sure you, I'm sorry, make sure you're clicking on the icon and not the name, because if you're clicking on the name, the program's going to think you want to change the name. So I click, double click on the icon, it'll move it out into the source. Let's see, what's the edit for this one? The end point is at 3118, so I'm actually going to do this, and hit I, and then I need to go, you'll notice me type in here, out point at 3603, 3603, oops, let me get rid of all of that first. It's got to be an empty box in order to type 3603, and I hit O. There's out point. I hit overlay. Bam, that goes in. And then I want a medieval villain one. And I want 3020. I in point to 3523, enter, out point, overlay, adds it to the video clip. And the last one, Medieval Villain 03. I've done that every time so far, huh? And I wanna go from 4317, bang, to 4916. Oh, I forgot to set my endpoint there. 4317. I, there we go. To 4916. I'll bring, I brought it up before. I bring up this idea of an EDL, which is an edit decision list. Let me talk and do this at the same time here. Which yeah, we'll set the out point there. It doesn't hold on one second. Something happened. So we'll set. Let's reset the end point here. Forty three. Forty three seventeen. Yeah, something happened there. So I'm gonna scrub forty three seventeen. Set an end point. Let's do it the old fashioned way to forty nine sixteen. Oh, I already got my out point, so that's fine. And I hit overlay. And that adds that clip as well. So the idea of an EDL or an edit decision list is just basically a list of edits. And you're going you're gonna to watch a lot of video when you start creating these movies. And you're going to try to decide what you want to keep and what you want to throw away. And most, most movie creators still to this day will sit there with and create what's called an EDL, which is kind of what I just did. You want the clip, the end point, the out point, and just you start loading your clips that way. So we just basically created a movie. The other piece I want to show you real quick, and it's again, it's that detailed piece. Move your cursor in between any two clips. I'm going to go in between the, the, uh, the last two clips. I'm going to hit page down, which pushes the, uh, time, the, the CTI to in between the two clips. I'm going to show you a new window here. This is called the, uh, we're going to do the, uh, the trim monitor, which is down closer down to the bottom end of the menu. I click on trim monitor. 
And there's a couple more edit pieces in here. This is basically the, the, the split between those two video clips. And you've got the same tools available to you, but this allows you to further refine the, the trim itself. If I move my cursor over into the left panel, you'll see just the left clip is involved, but here's, here's our rolling edit tool back previous. So I start dragging on the rolling edit. I'm going to drag to the left and watch this time indicator below. The out shift below is important as well. So as I start dragging, you'll see the out shift. Let's say I wanted to just take a second off of that clip. I look down at the out shift and I just drag until I get roughly about one second. And again, you can, you can change this zero. So it would be one zero zero. and you'll get an out shift of one second, which adjusted the right clip as well. Okay, and keep in mind with that rolling edit piece. I could do the same to the second clip if I drag to the right, you would see the in shift happening. You can shift based on frame numbers if you wanna subtract five by an offset or subtract one versus adding one or adding five. Uh, the other edit tool is something called a rolling edit tool, which is this idea right in the middle right now where I've got a line with some arrowheads. And if you start dragging on the rolling edit tool, and again, the idea here is it all matters where your mouse is. If I want the ripple edit tool, I push more into the video, the picture. So I is ripple edit, and I'm not pushing the mouse button. I'm just ripple edit, ripple edit on each side. You've got your brackets facing the way you want. But if I go right in the middle, watch what happens here on the rolling edit. It basically does it will adjust both at the same time. So if I want more of the left video and less of the right video, I just use the rolling edit tool and you start to see at the bottom these gray boxes. These You're just moving the in and out points of two clips at the same time. That's what the trim monitor allows you to be able to do. So if you notice in the timelines below, as I use the rolling edit tool, you see those gray markers for the in and out points and they change on both clips at the same time pretty advanced stuff. You may, you may not use it, I don't know, but it, it, it'll at least allow you to define a further, a very refined edit in your, uh, in between your two clips. All right, that was uh, quite a meaty unit on uh, edits. I hope I gave you enough idea as to what certain tools do and, and how to use an edit piece. I covered a bunch of different ways to edit pieces. Understand you're probably going to get comfortable with one or two. Um, but to be able to know exactly what it, what the other tools do is something that's uh, pretty important. As I go down this toolbar over here, you'll see we did the ripple edit. There's a track select tool, so you can select the whole track. So if I click on that, the whole track gets selected from where I am. Your ripple edit, there's your rolling edit, which I just showed you. Um, you've got some rate stretches, which are, are you know important when you want to either slow something down or speed something up. Some of those time delay pieces use those rate stretches. I use the razor quite a bit. If you want to cut a clip right in half, you can cut that too as well. Uh, and there's some other tools down here below the pen tool. And uh, those, those are very detailed tools. The last piece I'm going to show you in the next unit is how to split up audio and video and to use an audio track from one clip over a video track of another. So we'll see you in a bit.